starting here, Pokemon Blue NSC. As we start the run, you will see us going through the intro again, just like we did with Pokemon uh, Red starting up. But now, instead of what happened with Red, where we saved immediately in the house, we're going to make a little bit more progress because NSC stands for no save corruption. We are avoiding that save corruption trick to go for a different way of breaking the game. And this is going to be the fastest way that Pokemon Blue can be beaten getting to the uh, Hall of Fame, the Elite Four, without the use of save corruption. Now, you're going to see some crazy names there. Those names are essential to the setup for different data we're going to put in the, the PC and our party and our opponent's party. All of those different parts of memory and data locations are crucial to how we execute the code required to get to the Hall of Fame. And a lot of this uh, boilerplate stuff that you do in the early game just carries over. So we still have to go through the oak cut scene. We have to actually pick out a Pokemon with the battle, uh, Gary. All that stuff is going to be actually very similar to the glitchless tasks. <laughs> Sorry, I just got a new dog and he's uh, he can get startled by some things, but we're working through that. <laughs> uh... So we pick out Bulbasaur in this task, and a lot of the glitched tasks of Gen 1 you see Bulbasaur used because you can do great things with the uh, stats, actually, the stat experience and the DVs of Bulbasaur uh, combined to create really, really useful values in memory for you to get to the Hall of Fame. And then this battle is also quite useful for being able to die quickly. You just, you want to you want to die really, really quickly to Charmander. And you can see we're not even switching to Growl. We're just getting, uh, we're using Tackle and getting Tackle misses. I, I, I'm interested if we could uh, look into Growl Gen 1 miss fails being faster because so many of them are used but it it definitely makes sense that he's going for tackle this there because it's not that, any, that many more characters of text for to say uh the attack missed versus but it failed uh, especially when you take into account the number of frames it would take to switch to using growl We will, we will be showing Dog as an incentive, actually, so you guys better get the uh, donation incentives in for Meet Jerry percent. We do still have to get the, the parcel for this run, too. That is also an unavoidable part of the early uh, gameplay if you don't go for safe corruption. You can see taking some extra YOLO grass on the way down. Usually the speedrunners in RTA avoid all of that grass, make sure that we don't get encounters, but in a task we can walk through all of it and intentionally not get any encounters. Got the parcel delivered. And if anybody has any questions at any time about the runs, I am following chat and will be able to uh, watch along. Now, what we're going to see as we go back to the forest is going to be pretty interesting in terms of uh, glitched strategy. The, the yellow and the blue NSC strategies are actually very different. They both involve a glitch called Trainer Fly, but while Blue can go straight into the forest to reactivate the Trainer Fly glitch after causing Trainer Fly, Yellow has to do a lot more setup to get utility out of its Trainer Fly. You are correct, Control Acuteness. That is a classic. A classic of Pokemon speedrunning. Especially in Gen 1. We have to go buy some Pokeballs 
for part of the task to work. Uh, this is another thing, like I was talking about the Bulbasaur stats being specific. We need more ways of like putting data in specific places. So we need to get a second Pokemon so we can deposit something. The data in the boxes in the PC is in a different place from your party. And that place is also useful for getting to the Hall of Fame. So we get the Spiro. Make sure the Spiro has very specific stats. In the RTA run for Blue NSC, they actually can do the same thing. They just have to save the game and quit and, and load back up. Where the tasks can know the state of the RNG from the beginning of the game. So you can see there, we deposited one of the Pokemon into the PC, so its data will be useful for uh, some time later where data will... F uh, execution will flow past where it's supposed to, down to the PC. And now we go towards the forest where we can use our Trainer Fly. Now, Trainer Fly is a glitch where you get an encounter at the same time that you are seen by a trainer. And can anybody here guess what would happen if you get two battles at the same time like that? Like, what what's going to happen if you get a wild encounter as you get viewed by a trainer? That's, that's not something that you would expect to be possible in the code. There's a specific set of tiles that you can go through in the forest to avoid getting encounters as a human. The task intentionally avoids those tiles to just swag show off that it can walk through whatever grass and just not give a care. Oh no, a Pikachu! And it used Thundershock? That's, that sounds pretty dangerous. Oh no, Spear is dead. And we deposited Bulbasaur. We're out of Pokemon. And we also got a trainer battle. What's gonna happen? That that's that's the majesty of trainer fly right there is so you get you actually get the wild encounter precedent over the trainer battle, but when you die and the map reloads, it's still trying to uh, play the trainer battle in the background. So there's these like map script pointers that say where you're at within the state of a battle and it gets stuck at a certain place. So now when you re-enter the forest, the map script is still in the you're in the middle of a battle place. And now that it's out of alignment, it's just going to stay stuck there. Now what we're going to do here is manipulate red bar. Re manipulating red bar is super useful because we can see... Oh, the game's going to play a lot faster now. Look, look how much faster everything's going with Red Bar. It's actually pretty marginal in the No Safe Corruption task, because we, we don't have that much longer to go, guys. I mean, this is, this is still one of the glitched runs. But even though it it's, isn't used for very long, it's still a pretty big effect on the speed of the battling to have that low HP red bar jingle going off. We, we do seem to be caught in an endless recurrence of wheels. Yeah, in, in the... Some of you who have seen GDQ might remember from the last GDQ and, and uh, the last in-person GDQ, at least, the AGDQ. Uh, and, and here's the level 9 Weedle fight, and we're not going to be able to die in... or kill it in one peck, so we need two critical pecks. Or, or we, it's a, we're not going to be able to kill it in one critical peck, so we do two non-critical pecks. And then that one crits it immediately, and you're like, okay, now what's going on? And that's not even a Weedle, that's a Caterpie. But now we can finally get to Pallet Town, right? Or just the Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, so all, all of that advancing the map script pointer, 
once it got stuck too far, each one of the battles it got farther and further out of place. And after we did that trainer battle, it got so out of whack that it started executing a bunch of code like the stuff in the PC that I mentioned earlier where we had put Bulbasaur. And with his stats and his um, moves and the name of the opposing trainer, all, all of that data being aligned just correctly. Um, actually, name of the owning trainer of the Bulbasaur. With, with all that being aligned just correctly, we were able to get to the Elite Four, the Hall of Fame. Warp straight there. And if you guys, if you guys enjoyed those two runs, those were glitched runs. What we have up next for you guys, if I remember correctly, if I, if I remember my own scheduling correctly, is going to be Pokemon and Blue glitchless. So we're going to see not just how to beat the game in two different ways glitched, the fastest way, and then the fastest way that doesn't involve physically corrupting the save date, like turning off the console as it's saving, which it explicitly tells you not to do. <laughs> We're gonna see what would happen if you were to task the game and play it in the glitch list category like the RTA speedrunners do. So let's throw it to a break and I will come back once again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 